All right, I want to invite everybody in the back to start coming forward. Just want to invite everybody to come forward at this time. And for those that are worshiping online, just want to thank you guys for joining us this morning. Really excited to worship with you guys this evening. All right, as you guys are coming forward, I want to ask you guys actually to rise at this time. Why don't we all rise? Today, uh, I heard that the praise team, uh, they had a little bit of difficulty because the electric guitar strings broke twice during practice, right? So they don't have electric guitar, but it's all right. You know, we're here to worship and, you know, for every one of us right now, what's more important is right now you coming into the presence of God and just allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you and me. So um, just want to remind the praise team too, for all of you guys too, you know, I know you guys, you're serving and for the people in the back too, you guys are serving, but just remember that this time is time for you to meet with the Lord and just allow Him to work in your heart. So before we do anything else, for you guys uh, that are worshiping online too, let's just take this time to commit this time to the Lord. Let's come before Him and just invite the Holy Spirit to speak and work in our hearts right now. So let's do that together. Let's pray together right now. Let's invite the Holy Spirit to work in this place. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to speak to every one of us. Let's take this time to pray together right now. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, that your presence always goes with us. And Lord, we thank you that in this room, Lord, we are gathered now, Lord, in the midst of COVID-19, Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to gather and to worship together. So Father, we invite your presence in our hearts. Holy Spirit, we invite you to work in our hearts. We invite you to begin to work in each and every one of us right now. Lord, for every person that worships online as well, Lord, we just invite you to work in each of us right now. So Holy Spirit, we commit this time to you. Lord, we commit everything in our hearts to you. Lord, we submit to your word. May you speak. May you speak to your people. May you speak to the church of South Korea. Lord, may you speak to every one of us in this time. And Lord, we ask all over the world as well, as churches are gathering now, Lord, we ask that you'd speak to the church. Lord, we invite you to work in our hearts right now. Lord, we commit the church unto you. Lord, we commit South Korea unto you. Lord, we ask that you just work in every heart, Lord, that is in this room right now. Father God, as we commit unto you, Lord, may you just speak your truth into our lives. May you transform us, Lord. May you change us, Father God. May you move in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Lord, we lay ourselves before you with humility, Lord. We humble ourselves before you, Lord. We kneel before you, Lord. We ask right now, Lord, as we humble ourselves before you, we ask for a fresh moving in our hearts. May you just change us, Lord, if we are dead to you right now. Lord, if we are dead in our passions, Lord, we ask that you just raise us up in this time. Like the dry bones, Lord Jesus, may you blow upon us now, Holy Spirit. May you raise us up to be a mighty warrior, to be mighty army for you, Father God. Lord, in this generation, Lord, we ask that you'd use us now. Father, we commit ourselves unto you. Father, as we look at the word tonight, Lord, we ask that you'd speak to your church. We ask that you'd renew your church. We ask that we would be made new tonight, Father God. So we commit this time to you now, Holy Spirit. In the time of praises, Lord, in the time that we share together in prayer, Father, may you come and move in your people tonight. Lord, we commit this time unto you. And right now, enemy, we cast you out in Jesus' name. Get out. In Jesus' name, we command that you have no authority, no right to be in this place. Get out right now in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, we just invite your work in this place right now. In every heart, Lord, may we be submitted to your authority, Lord. May your kingdom come in this place. May your kingdom come into our hearts. Lord, may we be more and more made in the likeness of Jesus. Lord, work in this room. Work in every life, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask.
Take me by the hand, walk with me by quiet stream. Need you hear the winds, feel the ground beneath my feet. Cause you're the only friend who can set my soul at ease in the quiet price of my father's eyes I remember who I am when I feel the warmth of my father's smiles feels like I've been born again. I've been born again. No regret. My heart have me keep the first things first. Let me hear your whisper. Gotta hang on every word. Cause you're the only friend who can set my soul at ease. In the quiet pride of my father's eyes, I remember who I am. When I feel the worth of my father's smiles, feels like I've been born again in the choir. In the quiet price of my father's eyes, I remember who I am. When I feel the worth of my father's smiles, feels like I've been born again. I've been born again. I've been born again. Oh, I've been born again. Oh, 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 I've been born again. Oh, oh. I've been born again. Oh, 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 oh. I've been born I've been born again. Oh, la, 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 la. Oh, la, 
ba la 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 ba la 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 I've been born again Oh, I've been born again. Oh, Father, in the quiet price of my father's mind, I remember. Who I am when I fear the worst of my father's smiles feels like I've been born again in the quiet in the quiet price of my father's eyes. I remember who I am when I fear the worst of my father's smiles. Feels like I've been born again. I've been born again. Overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights the life, fall, leaves the night and night. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Yeah Sing at me before I spoke a word. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights the life, fall, leaves the night and night. I couldn't earn it. I don't disturb it till you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. When I was your fall, when I was your fall, heal your love for, for me. You have been so, so good to me.
when I felt no worth, you paid it over me. You have been so, so kind to me. Every voice. Holy, overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights the light, found leaves the night and night. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, till you give yourself away. Holy, overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh yeah. Oh. 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 Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No war you wanna kick down, lie you wanna tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No war you wanna kick down. Now you want to tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No war you want to kick down, now you want to tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Oh. No war you wanna kick down, lie you wanna tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No war you wanna kick down. Lie, you wanna tear down, coming after me. Holy, overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights the life out, leaves the night and I. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Yourself away, holy, overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain coming after me. Sing with me. No war you wanna kick down. Lie, you want to tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Don't worry, you want to kick down. Lie, you want to tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you want climb up, coming after me. No war you wanna kick down, now you wanna tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow, there's no shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. La 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 la. la. No war you wanna kick down. Lie, you wanna tear down, coming after 
Creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to live one cry from north to south and east to west. We hear Christ be magnified. Where the whole earth echo in His eminence, His name would burst from sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain top. We hear Christ be magnified. Sing with me. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Let His praise alive. Christ be magnified in me. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the earth of my life. Christ be magnified in me. When every creature, when every creature finds its inmost melody, when every human heart is native cry, in one, that in one, in rapture, more praise, we sing Christ, be magnified. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified. 
just let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the earth to all my life. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, singing, oh, Christ be magnified. Just let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Singing, oh, Christ be magnified from the earth to all my life. Christ be magnified in me. Everything I have is yours. Oh, oh, oh. I will bother you, and I will bother I know I stand strong and worship you. And if they put me through the fire, I rejoice cause you're there too. I won't be from my feeling, I hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, you can't hang me there with you. That is just the doorway into resurrection life. And if I join you in your suffering, then I join you when you rise. And when you return in the glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be saved. My soul will be saved. Oh, oh.
sing that one more time. I will not be lied on. I stand strong and worship you. And you be true. through the fire. And I'll rejoice as you're there too. I won't be formed by feelings. Fast to what is true. The cross brings transformation. You can hang me there with you. Death is just the doorway into resurrection life. And if I join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. You return in glory. We only have the love of saints. Sing it. Let His praise arise Christ be magnified in me Oh, Christ be magnified From the altar of my life Christ be magnified in me Let's just take a moment to pray and just let's Make that our prayer today that in our lives that every part of us would glorify God, that it would magnify God. And so I want to ask you guys to take this time and commit your life unto the Lord. If there's a part of your life that you feel like, God, I need transformation. I need a change so that I can magnify you in my life, so that I can glorify you, Lord, before the nations, before the people in my life. Lord, I want your name to be glorified and magnified through me. Let's just take this time to commit ourselves unto him. Let's pray together right now. Lift up your voices with me. Let's pray together right now. Come before the Lord in this time. Let's pray. Father God, we just come and commit, Lord, every part of our lives unto you, Father God. Especially right now, Lord Jesus, in our relationships, Lord. We ask that in every relationship that we have, Lord, that we would shine the glory of your glory, Lord, before the nations, Lord, before the people, Lord Jesus. So, Father God, I pray right now for every brother and sister in this room. Holy Spirit, bring transformation in our lives. Holy Spirit, bring transformation in our lives. Holy Spirit, may you do a work of transformation. May you touch right now. Lord, may you impart your anointing and your power and your work right now, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray. Break the power of sin in Jesus' name. We ask for transformation in Jesus' name. May you break the power of Satan in Jesus' name right now. Father, we commit unto you, Lord Jesus. We ask that you'd be magnified, that you'd be glorified. Lord, in our lives, may you be pleased, Lord, through your people, Father God. May you just shine your glory in every single brother and sister, Lord, that is worshiping right now. We just invite you to work in our lives now. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and be with your people now. Lord, we ask that you just magnify your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask for a transformation. Lord, we ask for a transformation, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask you to fill your people, fill the church. May you move in us, Father God. May you move in every believer that is gathered, Lord Jesus. We ask that you be magnified in our lives, Father God. Jesus, we ask for your name to be magnified, Lord, in your people, Father God. Lord, we ask for your word, Father God. We're going to continue and come before the Lord in this time, and I want you guys to stretch out your hands right now, and if any of you guys are praying for a need, 
you guys are praying for any problems in your lives or if you guys have a sickness or a disease. Right now, for any of you guys who are sick, you can place your hands where you are sick. And for those of you guys who know somebody who's sick that you're praying for, you can place your hand on their behalf over the place that they are sick right now. For people that are worshiping online as well, please do that right now as a sign of faith. And let's come into the Lord right now. Let's come before the Lord and let me pray for us right now. Father God, we enter into your presence right now, Lord, and we seek your grace. We seek your mercy upon your people, Father God. As they come with needs, Father God, as they come before you, Lord, with problems that they do not know how to, how to overcome, Father, we ask right now that you would provide for your people. May you provide financially for them. Lord, may you open a way for them right now. Lord, for people who have closed doors before them, may you open a door in their life right now. Father God, right now for anybody that is struggling with sin, we ask that you break the power of sin in Jesus' name in their lives right now. And Father God, right now we also commit unto you, Lord Jesus, every broken relationship that we are powerless, that we are powerless to mend right now. Father, may you do your work of redemption. May you do your work of uh, re reconnecting, Lord, of healing that relationship right now. So Father God, we ask right now that you would work in our lives, that you would heal those relationships right now. May you work, Father God. May you remember your people, Father God. Father God, we come before you with illnesses and sicknesses and diseases, and we rebuke them in Jesus' name right now. Get out in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Father God, with every other thing that we are praying for, we come before you because you are the healer. You are the sovereign God. You are the one who created, and you are the one with all the power. So we come before you right now. And Father, we proclaim healing in Jesus' name. We proclaim that the enemy is defeated in Jesus' name. We proclaim that you are providing a way for us, and in faith we accept, Father God. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for your work in our lives right now. Thank you for your provision, and we give you all the glory, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just sing that one more time with our voices. You're there too. I won't be from my feelings. I hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, you can't have me there with you. Amen. And Father, we ask that in our lives that you would be glorified, that your name would be glorified. Lord, even as you're answering prayers right now, we, we pray that you would be glorified in our lives, Father God. So may you answer the prayers of each of your people, Father God. We thank you and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to take this time to give our offerings unto the Lord. So I want to ask you guys to uh, prepare your offerings at this time. And why don't we give our offerings to the Lord? time to pray now let's close our eyes heavenly father we thank you again for your blessings we thank you again for your mercy upon us and we are really thankful that you always give us opportunity to gather in your name as you have given us this opportunity again that we are again gathering in your name we really need your blessing upon us and as we are going to offer our offerings make us a living sacrifices and these offerings brings your glory and these offerings bring your glory and in the name of jesus almighty we ask amen
Amen. Let's give a clap offering to God right now. Amen. We're going to take this time now to greet each other. So I want to invite you guys to come out of your seats and to greet, uh, you know, everybody in the room if possible. I think we can, I think we can pull that off, right? So try to greet everybody in the room right now. Um, praise team, you guys are welcome to take a seat. Um, so just let's take this time to greet each other. Just take a few minutes, all right? As you guys are making your way to your seats, I think uh, you guys had a chance to greet uh, many people. And just as you guys are taking your seats, I want to just recognize the people that are joining us online. Um, if there's any of you guys that are worshiping with us through YouTube, just want to thank you guys. Uh, we appreciate you guys joining us for worship uh, through YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Well, why don't we take this time to just thank our praise team so much for leading us in praise. All right, let's, let's thank our praise team, guys. You know, I want to take this time to uh, thank everybody who's helping out tonight. There are a lot of people that are helping out. Um, if you guys just look to the back, we have a lot of brothers and sisters who are helping us with uh, the slides and with sound and with the video and everything. So if you guys can just turn your head backwards really quickly, look at the people in the back, show your appreciation to them. Why don't we just clap for them, all right? Thank you guys so much. All right. Uh, it's good to see you guys this evening. Um, I'm glad that we can worship together at this time, and uh, before we go into the Word, I just want to share one quick announcement. Uh, as always, we want you guys to join a Go group. If you guys have not joined one yet, uh, I'm going to be saying this every, every week for quite a while now, so <laughs> please join a Go group, all right? Please join a Go group, and if you're not a part of one, you can just uh, let us know and we'll help you guys find one, all right? But that's all for me. Uh, we're going to take this time, and I want to ask you guys to open up with me to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 through 21. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 through 21. Deuteronomy 11, 30, 11 to 21. Actually, you know, guys in the back, I don't want you guys sitting in the back. Can you guys all come forward and sit in the seats? Uh, Jay and the team as well. I don't want you guys sitting in the back. Everyone, please come forward. Only person that should be in the back is Pastor Alicia and then all of the sound, sound people, right? All right. As you guys are uh, taking your seats, let me just share with you guys from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 11 through 21. This is what it says. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It's not up in heaven so that you have to ask, who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. 
This day I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he'll give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Can I get an amen? All right. You know, today we're going to continue looking at going back to the basics. We've been doing this for uh, two weeks now, and we're in week three, right? And for uh, four weeks total, we're going to be looking at going back to the basics. Um, I need you guys to do an exercise with me because looking at you guys, you guys look so dreary today, okay? I think you guys need a smile in your life right now. Look at the person closest to you. Give them the brightest smile you can give, all right? Everybody, please look at the person next to you or behind you. Give them the brightest smile that you can uh, give right now, all right? Really good to see you guys. Did you guys really do it? Yes, I feel much better now. You guys are smiling, right? But, you know, um, we've been going through this series, going back to the basics. And, you know, for many of us, this is just a reminder because these are so basic, right? It's just so basic. Why do we have to talk about this? I know this. This is like Sunday school. Yet, I, I want to guarantee that a lot of us, right, we struggle with even the basics, right? We still struggle with the basics. And so, uh, the first week that we were going through, uh, we, we covered the very basic, which is salvation. Have you been saved, right? And the second week, we talked about prayer. Prayer is like breathing. It's like the very essence of your relationship with God. Without prayer, we don't breathe, right? And so uh, last week, we were looking at how praying is praying to your Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven delights in you like a father delights in his baby, right? He delights in you. Not only that, we pray to God because he is our sovereign God. He's not a vending machine. He's not some, you know, machine that we can control if we know the password, right? He is the God who is sovereign, who is almighty and all-powerful, right? But today we're going to continue and we're going to talk about reading the word. We're going to talk about reading the Bible, right? That's, that's the third, third thing. You know, a lot of us, um, you know, I know a lot of prayer warriors, and, you know, we love to pray. And, you know, being a prayer warrior, a lot of times, you know, some people, they have the gift of hearing God's voice, right? Um, to be kind of, kind of frank and honest with you guys, I, I haven't really had many experiences where I feel like God has spoken to me specifically in my life to do this. I haven't heard it that often, Right? But, you know, I know some people who very frequently they hear from God very clearly that they're supposed to do something. They record it, right? And, you know, I think that's a blessing. I, th I think God does work in those ways. Some people, they dream and they know that God is trying to tell them something, right? But uh, the danger, the danger of that kind of a faith is that, you know, if you go down that road far enough, and you have no base, you have no standard, right? You might end up thinking some strange things, right? <laughs> and you might say, God told me this, God told me this. But there's always, right, another pillar that's supposed to ground you, right? On one side, there's prayer and your, your relationship with God. At the other side is another aspect of this relationship with God, and it's the Word of God. That's what keeps us grounded. That's what stabilizes us, right? So anytime that you start to think, you know, God asked me to do this, if it does not match up with the word of God, that's not God's word for you. If God tells you, I'm supposed to date another woman, not my wife, that's not God's word for you, right? <laughs> Let me tell you, clearly that is not God's word for you, all right? I can tell you very confidently, that is not from God, all right? So you always have to balance, right, prayer with the word of God. So I want to take a look at reading the Word, but reading the Word is one of the things that we hate to hear preached to us. Why? Because it's so basic, but it's like homework that nobody wants to do, right? It's like homework that no one wants to do. And so I want to talk about today, reading the Word. Why don't we read the Word, first of all, right? Why don't we read the Word? And then the second is... Why should we read the word, right? Why should we read the word? And lastly, how should we read the word, all right? 
First, why don't we read the word? Why don't we read the word? You know, um, you know, I want to ask you guys honestly. <laughs> if you guys are looking away from me, right? You guys are guilty, right? Are you guys reading the word daily? Everyone's looking at the ground, right? <laughs> are you guys reading the word daily? If not, why? Why don't we read the word, right? You know, in Deuteronomy 30, I believe there's one of the reasons why we don't read the word. Deuteronomy 30, verses 11 through 40, 14, what we read was, Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult, right? It's not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It's not up in heaven so that you have to ask, well, Who's going to go to heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? Or is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask, Who's going to cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No. The word is very near you. It's in your mouth, in your heart, so you may obey it. It's in your phones right now. Some of you guys brought it, a paper copy. It's not far away from you, right? But the problem is, I think we don't like what's not too difficult. We don't like what's too simple. We don't like what's uh, too ordinary, right? We like what's extraordinary without committing to the ordinary, right? A lot of us, we like the extraordinary without committing to the ordinary, right? But, you know, just, just to tell you the, the point of the first, first point is reading the Bible is very simple, it's very ordinary, and it's been given to us. There's nothing complicated about it, Right? Why don't we read the Bible? It's because a lot of us, we don't appreciate the fact, right, that, that our spirituality is based on faithfulness to the ordinary things. Our spirituality, our walk with God is based on faithfulness to the ordinary things, right? You know, um, in the Bible, there's a clear example of this in a man named Na Naaman, right? Naaman. He was a gen general. And Naaman, in 2 Kings 5, verse 1, this, this is when you are introduced to a character in the Bible named Naaman. It says, now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but this is the problem. He had leprosy, all right? He had leprosy. So this was a great man, but he had leprosy. And so because he had leprosy, he asks, right? He asks his king, you know, how can I be healed of this? And the king asks the king of Israel, you know, hey, you know, what, what can be done? Find the man who can heal this person. And so finally they come to Elisha, right? The servant, servant of Naaman says, hey, I know a person in Israel named Elisha, right, who can heal you. And so Naaman comes to visit Elisha, the prophet of God, and when he does so, you know, being the great man that he is, you know, when a president walks into your house, right, they're expecting something, right? <laughs> they're expecting honor. You know, uh, I'm really blessed. Um, in our ministry, there are a lot of uh, very um, people with very high standing. Um, we have ambassadors in our ministry. We have people who in society, they're held with such high esteem, right? And yet, when they come here to YM, I'm so blessed that they come with such humility, right? Uh, some of them, they don't even want to be recognized for their official title. Why? Because they don't want you to be like, oh, you know, Mr. Ambassador, right? <laughs> they don't want that, right? But Naaman, when he comes, when he comes to Elisha, right, he comes with pomp. He comes with, you know, all the, all, all, all the glory, right? He comes to the door of Elisha, and he's expecting Elisha to run out and be like, oh, Naaman, let me pray on behalf of you so that God would heal you, right? And he's expecting like, oh, you know, God, please heal Naaman. He's expecting something great, but what does Elisha do? He sends his servant out and says, hey, go wash in the River Jordan, right? You know, there's a spiritual lesson for Naaman. It's that spirituality is faithfulness to the ordinary. It's not something, ex, you know, spectacular. It's not something extraordinary. 
Your relationship with God is based on your faithfulness to the ordinary. Amen? You know, um, when I was young, I hated learning the piano, but my, my mom, you know, like every Korean mom, <laughs> sent me to piano lessons, and um, I used to go to piano lessons with, uh, it was my friend's house, right? And I would go to piano lessons, and, um, you know, I was invited to piano lessons for a few times, and every time I came, instead of playing the piano, I would always be like, you know, I'd play it, and I'd be grumbling, and then, you know, the piano teacher would be like, hey, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick, okay? And then when she goes to the bathroom, I'd be playing with my friend in the other room, like computer games, right? And she'd be like, Sam, right? And then I come back and I play a little bit. And she's like, hey, I'm going to check on something in the kitchen. You keep practicing, okay? And then she'd go to the kitchen. And then when she comes back, I'm not there, right? This happened a few more times. And then, you know, for the first time, like, she said something that I really liked. She was like, you know, Sam, after today, you don't need to come back. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah, right? And, like, man, if I think back... To, to that teacher, like, I, I really think I broke her heart, right? Because <laughs> she probably really wanted to teach me, but I was never interested in it. But, you know, growing up, I was always telling my mom, why, why didn't you force me to continue with the piano lessons? Like, I look at all my friends who can play piano really well, and I'm like, I wish, right? You would have just forced me to go. But if you, if you see, you know, people like me, you know, what you see is there's this attitude where you want the result. You want to be good at piano. You want to be able to play those amazing pieces, but you don't want to put in the time, right? And the very basic building blocks, right, of something extraordinary comes from the daily grind of the ordinary. It's faithfulness to ordinary things. And our relationship with God is exactly the same. Spirituality is faithfulness to the ordinary. You know, recently we had a very great man, um, man of God that passed away. Uh, I don't know if you guys know a man named Rabbi Zacharias. Um, I think we have a picture, Rabbi, Rabbi Zacharias. And some of you guys know this man. He's, he's a great speaker, a great apologist, and he was one of my uh, heroes, right? On YouTube, I would always li listen to Rabbi Zacharias. Anybody who is like you know, an atheist, anybody who wants to learn about Christianity, I'd always point them to Ravi Zacharias. I'd be like, listen to his videos. He does such a good job of explaining the gospel, right? But, you know, um, unfortunately, last Tuesday, he passed away at the age of 74. And, you know, he was, he was my hero. I know that Pastor Yoon really admired him as well. You know, there were a lot of people in the world that grieved this loss, but Ravi Zacharias was a really amazing man, right? For 40, 48 years of his life, he committed it to preaching the gospel. And for those 48 years, he didn't preach a new gospel every year. He preached the same thing every year for 48 years. You know, when I listen to Ravi Zacharias, I actually kind of know what I'm getting, right? When I turn on Rabbi Zacharias, I know what he's going to say. He's going to talk about origins, right, morality, about reason for life, right, about Jesus Christ. He's going to talk about that. And he's been talking about that for 48 years. In his life, he never, you know, experienced a time where he's like, I have a new teaching for you. I have a new, you know, a new revelation for you guys. It was always Jesus Christ from the very beginning of his ministry for 48 years. And that's the thing. In Jesus Christ, it's really simple. The answer is very simple. The gospel is very simple. Our walk with God is not complicated. It's very simple. And if you want to experience transformation in your life, it requires a daily commitment to God's word. So I want to ask you guys, are you reading God's word daily again? Are you reading God's word daily you know, for some of you guys, this just sounds like chansori, right? But I want to commend you guys. I want to, you know, ask you guys to commit, right? In your life, if you don't have a time set aside for reading God's word, you need to. You need to. If that means getting up earlier in the morning, right? If that means 
right, saying, I, I, I got a date with God, do it, right? Whatever it takes. You know, um, just, you know, to be really honest with you, um, you know, a lot of t- you know, I, I got ordained as a pastor um, actually uh, on Thursday, yesterday, right? And, um, you know, being ordained, um, I don't, it doesn't really strike me, right? It doesn't, I, I don't feel it, right? I don't feel any different yesterday and today, right? I don't feel any different. But one of the things is um, I feel a really heavy weight now. I feel, I feel a heavy weight. And the reason why is, um, you know, um, in my life, uh, my model for being a pastor was always my dad, right? My dad. And one of the things that I admire about my dad was, you know, he was, just to be very frank, I, I don't know if he's listening or not, right? But he wasn't a great public speaker, right? His, his sermons were never <laughs> very inspiring for me, right? Um, um, you know, even the way that he did ministry, if you think about the, the kind of the... Um, like how well he did ministry, a lot of times I'd be like, why does he do it that way? He could have just done it you know, a thousand different ways that are better, right? But one of the things that I admired is he always committed himself to reading God's word and to praying. That's for sure. You know, one of the famous stories, you know, that I, I remember about my dad is my dad, he would always have a regular time of prayer, right? And during that time, no matter what he was doing, he would always go and pray, right? And so one time, um, his office, his department was going out to play soccer, right? They were going out to play soccer. He was the goalkeeper. And they were in the middle of the game, and all of a sudden, they're like, where's the goalkeeper, right? <laughs> Where'd he go? And the reason why he was gone, right, later on they found out, was, oh, he went to pray, right? <laughs> and that became a very common, you know, excuse. Always they'd be like, where the heck is this guy? Oh, he went to pray. All oh, right, it's, it's that guy. He went to pray, right? It's okay, be committed to prayer, right? doesn't matter. Do what it takes to commit to a life of prayer, to a life of reading the word. Reading the word is a commitment that you need to make real in your life. If you don't have set aside, if you, don't, if you have not set aside a time in your life, you need to do that right now. For you guys right now, mentally, I want you guys to start thinking, when are you going to commit to reading the Bible? It needs to be a regular part of your life. How can you say you love God when you don't even read the Bible, right? You know, second, why should we read the Bible then? Why should we read God's word? You know, in Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 to 18, it says, See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. He makes a distinction. You can choose, right? Life and prosperity or death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you'll live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you're not obedient, and if you're drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you're crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. You know, if you read this passage without really thinking about it, it can be kind of a boring passage to read. But if you really look at the words, this is one of the scariest passages in the Bible, right? God says <laughs> very clearly, hey, you do what I say and you'll have life and prosperity. If you don't, I'm going to destroy you. Destruction is going to come into your life. This is one of the scariest passages in the Bible, And right before this, God was talking about all the curses that he's going to bring on the Israelites if they don't obey God, right? I don't think a lot of us realize the seriousness of the consequences of not obeying God in our lives. You know, um, when COVID-19 first started, right, when when we first experienced COVID-19, I remember in the beginning, right, um, I was one of those people that was like, you know, What's the big deal with masks anyways? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys were like that or not, but I was one of those people that never wears a mask, right? It, like my wife would always tell me like, oh, you know, like all the bisai manji, bisai manji, right? And then she was like, wear a mask. I never wore a mask, right? And then when COVID-19 first started, I used to be like, what's the big deal? I remember talking with one of my friends. We were like, 
even the percentage of people that die is like so little. What's the big deal, right? When it first started, right? Now the numbers are crazy, right? <laughs> numbers are crazy. Like five million people worldwide have gotten coronavirus, right? And the number of deaths is just crazy. The number of people that are dying. And, you know, until things start to get real around us, until we saw the damage that COVID-19 was doing, you know, it was never really serious. I never took all of the precautions seriously. Only when it started to affect my life did I really start to open my eyes and say, this is something that I need to pay attention to. The thing about God's word is God's promise, God's promise in your life is that if you don't take the word seriously, right, if you don't take God's word seriously, there are serious consequences. I don't say that, right, lightly. I say that because you need to understand. That's why in Joshua 1.8, it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Meditating on something day and night, that's serious, right? How many of us are meditating on the word day and night? You know, the um, Bible is clear that life and death depend on God's word. Do we realize the seriousness of the consequences of God? And what the promise is, is yes, there's destruction if we don't obey God's word, but it also promises that the word of God is life. The word of God is the source of our life. In Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. You know, I think um, for a lot of the pastors, um, you know, we're, we always talk, right, about um, ministry at YEM. And, you know, as we're talking, you know, some of the things that we talk about is how I think we're living these days in a new age of biblical illiteracy, right? Um, I, know, I don't know, growing up, I, I, I was a PK, and so... Uh, a lot of times, you know, I was one of those kids that, you know, <laughs> in Sunday school, I was always like raising my hand saying, I know the answer, right? I know the answer, right? But I think today, right, the standard, just to be really frank with you guys, the standard of biblical literacy has dropped quite a bit, right? And I'm really shocked sometimes when people, right, when they're talking about the Bible, they're like, I never heard that story before. And I'm like, you never heard that story before? Really? Right? Right? You know, and some people, right, you know, they get confused, right? They're like, oh, you know, I know, there's a, I know there's a Saul, right? He was a king, right? He was a king. But then later on, he becomes the apostle, right? <laughs> right? There, there was a Saul. He was a king. But one day, he becomes an apostle, right? This is serious, right? If you guys, you know, if you guys f see yourself, right, not really understanding the Bible, right, know that the Bible is something that you need to take seriously, right? That's a sign that you need to be reading it, right? That's why God, you know, Joshua warns, right? It says, meditate on it day and night. Keep this book of the law always on your lips so that you may be careful to do everything written on it. Why? Because you being prosperous, right, or not, it depends on whether you know the word or not, right? Now, I want to ask you guys, I want to ask you guys this year, right, this year, if you haven't committed to um, a Bible plan yet, you need to read the Bible according to a plan, right? You need to set aside a time, obviously, but second is you need to find a Bible reading plan, right? You know, our, our senior pastor actually asked uh, for every, every member of the church this year to commit to a few things. I think there were two things. And the first thing was reading the Bible at least once a year, right? That was one of the things that he was really uh, commending, uh, asking his members to do. And the second thing, right, the second thing that he was asking is for everybody to evangelize to one person a year. Just have, have one person that they want to share the gospel with, right? 
a year, right? But, you know, if you think about this whole idea of reading the Bible once a year, what it means is it's, it's making sure that you see the whole Bible, right? Not just one portion of it. A lot of us, we love sound bites. We love those special verses, but we don't read the whole Bible, right? I had a friend, um, I had a friend who uh, used to love being very picky with food. And one of the things is um, she would get hooked on to one thing that was always healthy, right? Uh, she would hear salmon is so good for you, right? Salmon is really good for you. And then for a month, she would only eat salmon, like literally every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, only salmon, right? And um, I remember one time she had to get hospitalized. Why? Because she was only eating salmon. And then the doctors were like, what the heck are you doing with your body? Right? Yes, salmon's good for you, but everything else is good for you too, right? You can't just eat salmon, right? And, you know, that's the thing, the same thing with Bible reading. If you're, you know, if you're one of those people that love the book of Psalms and you're always reading from the Psalms, right, but you don't read anything else, there's a problem. It's like eating salmon for a month, right? It's not good for you. You need the Old Testament. You need the New Testament. You need everything. So, you know, I want to encourage you guys, if you're following a reading plan, follow those reading plans that say read the whole Bible in a year, right? There are many plans. There are so many good ones, right? Um, you know, there, there are plans where you can read, like, a little bit of Old Testament, a little bit of New Testament, you know, the Psalms, right, and the Gospels, right? Those are good plans, too. Just want to encourage you guys, find the plan and stick to it, right? Stick to it. And read through the whole Bible. If you've never read through the whole Bible once in your life, you need to. You need to. All right? The last thing is how should we read then? How should we read? And in verses 19 to 21, 19 to 20, sorry, it says, This day I call the heavens and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life, and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now when Moses preaches this sermon in Deuteronomy 30, first he starts by talking about the commands of God, the law of God, you know, follow the law of God, then you will have life. But here he does something. What he does is first he's talking about the Bible, right, about the law. He says that is your life. But now he switches it and he says, for God is your life. For God is your life. And what that means is, the word, right, when we're reading the word, when you go through that checklist, right, of reading today's Bible reading plan, that is how you communicate with God. That is how you have a relationship with God. Bible reading is not just a checklist. It's a time to let God speak to you. You know, um, there are a lot of unmarried people here, and... Um, but some of you guys have roommates. If you guys have roommates, then you guys know what I'm talking about, right? If you have a roommate, you know, um, some people, right, when you talk with them, you love talking with them. Why? Because they actually listen to what you're saying, right? And you, ha you can have a conversation. You know, sometimes, you know, my wife complains because, you know, when I talk with my wife, it'll be in an hour-long conversation, right? And for 50 minutes, I'm talking and talking and talking. And she's like, oh, and so what happened with this person? And she's asking all these insightful questions, right? And then when 50 minutes pass, right, it's her turn to talk. And I'm like, oh, you know, I actually got to go now, right? My, mom, my wife is always like, okay, okay, she's very nice. But then later on, I find out like, oh, shoot, I should have let her talk, right? And it's not fun to talk to someone who just loves talking, right? And the thing is, conversation is always a two-way thing, right? It's always a two-way thing. And it's the same with Bible reading. Bible, Bible reading is not just you receiving content. It's a conversation with God. Through Bible reading, there needs to be something that happens in your life, a change. You need to receive from God what he's trying to say to you as you're reading the Bible, right? And so spirituality is obedience to God. 
When you're reading the Bible, it's not just receiving content. It's not just learning more trivia about the Bible so that when Pastor Sam talks about the Bible, I'm like, aha, I know that, right? No, that's not the purpose. You're reading the Bible. Why? So that God can speak to you in that time, right? You know, today's kind of a practical sermon, I guess you can say, you know. First point was basically, right, set aside a time for Bible reading. Second point was basically, right, follow a reading plan. Follow a reading plan. And the last thing is, as you guys are following that reading plan, right, make sure you leave room for God to speak into your life. You know, one of the scariest things, one of the scariest things is people who have Bible knowledge but who don't flick their eye when they commit sin before God. That's the scariest thing. When you get to a place when you know the Bible so well, but you don't even flick an eye, right? You don't even, you feel no remorse when you're sinning before God. That's a scary place to be. I'm going to be honest with you guys. As a pastor, as a PK, it's so easy to get to that place. Why? Because we're so saturated with reading the Bible, right? We know so much about the Bible. But that doesn't mean I really obey God's word better than other people, right? And what you need to remember is in your life, you need room to obey God. What that means is when you're reading the Bible, have a journal. Have a journal, right? Write down, what is God telling me through this passage? How is he convicting me? How is he telling me to change, right? You need to have a journal. I want to speak to everybody who's in this room who's been in the church for many years, if you're at a place where you read the Bible and you know what it's saying, but you see no transformation in your life, wake up. Wake up. That's not a good place to be, right? And that's, that's the same reminder. I'm not just saying it to you guys as, you know, reprimanding you guys. I'm saying that to me as well, right? For those of us who have been in the church a long time, remember that we need to live in obedience to God. Let the word communicate with you. Let God communicate with you as you guys are committing to reading God's word, right? A simple step that you can take is what we do at YM is observation, inter interpretation, and application, right? Always make sure you include application in your Bible reading, all right? You know, at the end of the day, I, like I always shared with you guys as we were going through the series, you know, going back to the basics, right? It really boils down to, you know, just simply, are you walking with God every day, right? Me knowing whether you guys are close with God, it's not a question of, do you understand the intricacies of, you know, theology? Do you understand, right? Like tulip, right? Do you understand, right? Um, Arminian th theology and Calvinist theology, that's not important. Right? I mean, it's important, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is when I ask the question, did you spend God time with God this morning, you need to be able to say, yes, I did. That's really what it boils down to. That's the basics. Are you spending time with God every day? And if you're not, let this be a reminder. Let this season be a reminder. You and I, we need to wake up. We need to restore our relationship with God. Amen? Oh, let's all rise, and I just want to invite the praise team to come forward, too. I want to pray with anybody that needs to make a decision tonight to believe in Jesus Christ. Um, as you guys know, we've been doing this every week, but especially for people that have been in the church for a long time, uh, you might feel like, I know what church is, I know what being a Christian is, but if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ in your life, you need to make a decision to do so. So. I just want to pray with anybody that is making that decision for the first time today. And for any of you guys that are, please follow me in this prayer. And for anybody that has already made that decision, I want you guys to intercede for the people in this room that are making that decision for the first time. 
All right, so why don't we take this time and for everybody of, every one of you guys that want to make that decision right now, please pray with me as we pray this prayer together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I confess that I am lost, that I am broken, that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. But today, I accept your invitation. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Today, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I believe that He died, that I would be forgiven, and rose again to give me life. I receive this new life. I give you every part of me. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I just want to thank you guys so much for making that decision today. And if any of you guys uh, want to talk to any of the pastors, including me or Pastor Alicia, Pastor David, Pastor Park, um, Pastor Brian, you can just let us know and then we'll, uh, we'd love to grab a coffee with you guys. And if you guys haven't joined a GO group one more time, I just want to encourage you guys to join a GO group and become one in the family. But we're going to take this time now to pray together. And I want to pray with any of you guys that are currently not living in obedience to God's word. It's not okay to stay there. It's not okay to stay there. If you find yourself just caught in a habit and you feel like it's okay, let me remind you, it's not okay. God is calling you out of that. God is trying to break that sin and the pattern in your life. And the Lord is asking you, submit that area of sin to Him today. Surrender that unto the Lord. And today I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to break that pattern in your life and He's going to sanctify you. He's going to be glorified in your life. He's going to make His name shine through your life. And so we're going to do that right now. We're going to come before the Lord. Let's ask that He would make His power manifest right now, that He would free you, that you would be obedient before Him. So let's do that right now. Let's just come before the Lord. I want to invite you guys to pray with me. Let's lift up our voices. Let's pray together right now. Let's come before the Lord right now. Father God, we come before you, Lord, with every area of our life right now, Lord. And as we enter into your presence now, I ask, Lord, over the church, Lord, over my brothers and sisters, Lord, over my life, Lord, you know every part. You know every deed. You know every thought. Lord, you know every pattern, Lord, and we surrender that unto you right now. Lord, though we are powerless, you are powerful. Lord, though we are powerless, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can transform. So I just ask right now, Holy Spirit, for your touch. I ask, Holy Spirit, for your filling. Holy Spirit, may you come now in power and change the church. Lord, may you sanctify us. May you sanctify the church this evening. Lord, we ask that you just break the power of sin right now. So I command and I... And I rebuke and I command in Jesus' name, get out right now. Father God, we ask right now that you just work in our lives right now. Lord, may you purify us. May you cleanse us, Lord Jesus. May you just work in our hearts, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that in this time that you would allow us to live in obedience to your word, Father God. Lord, work in the church right now, Lord Jesus. We ask that you work in every heart right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, we invite you to work right now in our hearts, Lord Jesus. And every person that is gathered in this room right now, Lord. So I ask that you just fill them with the Holy Spirit right now. Fill us with the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, may you come make your temple, make your home in our hearts right now. 
move in our hearts, Lord. Lord, we ask for a new work in our hearts right now. Lord, we ask for your work in our hearts right now, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask for your work in this place right now. Oh, we ask for your work, Holy Spirit, right now, Lord Jesus, in our lives right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, commit to you, Lord Jesus. We commit to you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we ask that we would be obedient to you, Lord. Make us a people that are obedient to you, Father God. Lord, make us a people that are obedient to you, Lord. We ask for your work in this time, Lord, a special anointing, special work right now. We ask right now for your filling Holy Spirit. To make us live, Lord Jesus, in simple obedience, Lord. In faithfulness before you, Father God. Right now, may you just allow your power to be made manifest in your people, Father God. May they glorify your name. May they glorify your name. Sanctify your people, Father God. Sanctify your people, Father God. May you fill us, Lord. May you fill us, Holy Spirit. Come upon your people in this time, Lord Jesus. Lord, we look to you in this time, Lord Jesus. Father God, we ask for your work and your people, Lord Jesus. Sanctify us tonight, Lord Jesus. Sanctify us, Lord Jesus. You're raising up new desires in us now, Father God. And as you do, Lord Jesus, I pray that you just change us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask for a work of transformation in this time, Lord Jesus. Lord, we cast out every work of the enemy in our lives to tangle us, Lord, to bring us down, Father God. Lord, we cast out every work of the enemy right now. We ask, Lord Jesus, for a special anointing and special power right now in our lives to be made manifest. Father, in your people, Lord, may you be glorified. In your people, may you be glorified, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we submit unto you, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask for a filling right now, Lord Jesus. We ask for your filling, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we ask for a work of the Holy Spirit in our lives right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you know every thought, Lord Jesus. He asks that you be glorified, Lord Jesus. Lord, may you work in your people tonight, Father God. Father, may you cleanse us now. Father, may you cleanse us by your blood. Lord, we invite you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we commit to you. Lord, we 
Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yeah, 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 We want to continue in a time of prayer, and as the church, we're going to take this time to pray for the world and for COVID-19 and with everything that's going on. So uh, please join me as we continue to pray for COVID-19. We're going to ask that God would stop the spread, that a new vaccine would quickly be discovered, and for the health of government and medical workers that are working around the clock Let's also pray for the church to be salt and light and for the gospel to spread in this time, for people to be hungry for the gospel. And lastly, let's just pray for the, uh, everybody that's stuck in Shincheonji cult and many other cults right now in South Korea. So let's just pray over all of these prayer requests together. Why don't you guys join me? Let's just lift up our voices right now once again and pray for all these prayer requests together. And uh, let's pray. Father God, we just want to lift up, Lord, this nation, Lord, and the U.S., Lord, all of the countries around the world right now, Lord, who are suffering, Lord, who are going through, Lord, such uncertain times, Lord Jesus, such difficulties, Lord. We ask that this would be a time, Lord, for people to look to you, for people to find hope in the gospel and the good news. So, Father God, we ask right now, Lord, that you would be working, Lord, in all of the nations, Father God, in South Korea, Lord, may people in their hopelessness, Lord, may they turn to you, may they find the good news, Lord, may they be open to the gospel, and Father God, right now, Lord, in the U.S. as well, Lord, in all the countries right now where death tolls are rising, just ask, Father God, that you would stop the spread of COVID-19, we ask that you would just work, Lord, a miracle, we ask that you would just bring about an end, Lord, to this spread, most, and most of all, right now, we just ask, Lord, that you would allow a new vaccine to be found, Lord Jesus, so that we might be able to get it to all the people, Lord Jesus, that are suffering from this COVID-19, Father God. Lord, we also ask right now for all of the government and medical workers, Lord, all around the world who are working, Lord Jesus, who are working tirelessly, Father God. Lord, we ask for your touch. Lord, we ask for wisdom. We ask for guidance for every leader, Father God. Lord, we ask for your guidance and your wisdom, Lord. We ask for your work over all of your people, Father God. Lord, especially right now with the church, Father, we ask that you would give wisdom to all of the pastors and the leaders. 
Lord, may you give us wisdom and understanding. Lord, in this time, may you allow the church to be effective for your kingdom. Send us out, Lord Jesus, to expand your kingdom, Lord. So, Father God, may the church take the gospel, Lord, to people who are hungry, to people who are in need, Father God. May we share the gospel everywhere we go, Lord. Father God, we ask for your anointing and your work, Lord, in each of us, Lord. Father, may you send us out into our neighborhoods, Lord. May you send us out to our workplaces, Lord. May you send us out, Lord, to all of the people around us, Lord, to share the gospel and the good news to them, Lord. So, Father God, we ask that you just work. And especially, Lord, right now, Lord, for people that are stuck in the Shinchanji cult, Lord, free them, Lord. Free them. Father God, we ask that you open up their eyes, Lord. Allow them to see, Lord, Lord, your truth. May they understand your truth. May they turn to you, Father God. We ask for your work. Lord, we also ask right now for the churches in Indonesia, Lord, that are unable to gather, Lord, that are unable to worship together. Father, may you allow the church to stay united in this time. Lord, may we all look to you as our hope. May we all look to you, Father God, in these times. And Lord, for the church in China as well, Lord Jesus, that is suffering, Lord, all of the missionaries around the world that are currently unsure of what they must do, Father God, speak to them. May you give guidance. May you give leadership, Father God. Work, Lord Jesus, on our behalf, Lord. Father, may you work right now, Lord, to bring your kingdom down. Father, may we spread the kingdom. May we expand the kingdom in these times. So help us to look to you, Father God. Help us to look to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask for your work to be done, Father God. For all the ambassadors, for all the embassies, Lord Jesus. For all of the people that are struggling with Lord, all the international policies in these times. Father, may you give wisdom and guidance right now. And Lord, we ask for our church as well. We ask that you just continue to work through Yoido Full Gospel Church, Lord, to provide hope, Lord Jesus, to people that are in suffering, that are in need, Father. May you continue to work, Lord, in each of us in this time, Father God. Lord, we ask for your work and your touch, Lord Jesus. You have mercy, Lord Jesus. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Me have mercy, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we ask for your mercy, Lord Jesus. We ask for your work in our lives, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we ask for your mercy in our work, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Why don't we close by just singing that together right now? Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified. Let's sing that one more time. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified from the altar. Father, over your people, Lord, the church that desire to magnify your name, Father, I ask right now that this month, Lord, these weeks, Lord, may we spend it in spiritual renewal, in a time of growing intimate with you, Father God. So restore us unto you, Father God. And for every person right now, Lord, that is walking through a time of wilderness, Lord, a time of dryness lord father just like you blew the wind of the holy spirit upon the valley of dry bones may you bring us to life 
So, Father, may you just raise each of us, Lord, to new vitality, Lord, new passion, Lord, for you and your name, for your word, Lord, a love for you, Father God. May you raise that up in your people. May you bring about obedience in our lives so that we might magnify your name and glorify you, Father God. Father, may you free your children from the power of sin. May you break it in Jesus' name and fill us with the Holy Spirit, Father God. So may you continue to work in each of our lives. Magnify your name through us, Father God. We commit ourselves to you fully, Father God. just want to thank every one of you guys for joining us for uh, Upper Room tonight and for everybody that's worshiping online as well. Just want to remind you guys one more time, if you're not in a go group, please talk to us and we'll help you guys find uh, your group, go group. Please bow with me as, we, uh, as I give you the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of our God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be upon each brother and sister that desires to magnify Christ's name in their life. May that power be made manifest and may your presence go with your people from now till the day that you come back, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's give a clap offering to God.
as a prayer that I come awake in your people, come awake in your cities, come awake in your people, come awake in the city, oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out, every stronghold will crumble, hear the chains hit the ground, oh God of Like a 